Hi, my name is Henry Sagerman. This is a video about hinged surfaces, and specifically negatively curved hinged surfaces. So how do we get to this thing, whatever this thing is? Um, so let's start with some of the regular polyhedra. So these are the, the tetrahedron, the octahedron, and the icosahedron. So these are all the regular polyhedra that you can make out of triangles. Um, and this is what you get when you start making a surface with uh, triangular faces and you arrange three triangles around each vertex. And this is what you get when you do four triangles around each vertex. The icosahedron is what you get when you arrange five around each vertex. And so, well, obviously you can keep going. So this is uh, what you get with six triangles around each vertex. And of course, um, it's, it goes on forever. It's a tiling of the plane rather than these you can think of as, as tilings of the sphere. They close around after some finite number of triangles and you're done. Um, with this, you go on forever. And I've only, of course, printed a, a small amount of this. Um, and I made it hinged uh, because it's sort of, sort of interesting this way. And you can see sort of how it flexes and moves. It's very sort of fabric-like. Fabric um, and incidentally, if I'd uh, made uh, any of these uh, polyhedral with hinges, it wouldn't have been very interesting. They don't actually move, they're rigid. Okay, so, so with six triangles, you get um, something that fills the plane. And so the obvious question is, what happens with seven? And so that's this gadget here. Um, so there are seven equilateral triangles around each vertex. You get these quite large holes where the vertices go. And what you discover is, well, it makes this kind of surface, but it doesn't play flat, certainly. You can't, you try and sort of flatten it out onto the, the table, and you can get parts of it to be almost flat, but then there's other parts which are not, and there's really just nothing you can do about this. You, you cannot get everything to be flat at the same time. Um, and really what's going on is that this, uh, well, it's negatively curved. So, so whereas the, um, the polyhedra are sort of like spheres it's with positive curvature, and when you've got six triangles on a vertex, this is, this is flat, it's got zero curvature. When you have more than six triangles, you've got negative curvature, um, which this is an example of. So what is curvature? Um, so there's a few different ways to, to think about it. Um, in the context of these, these sort of surfaces, um, you can just think of it as uh, what are the, if you add up the, the angles at a vertex, does it add up to more than two pi or not? So this adds up to less than two pi because this is five times 60, which is 300 degrees, um, which is uh, less than 360 degrees or two pi. For the, for the uh, six triangles around a vertex, you get exactly um, 360 degrees. And for, for more than that, you get, uh, so this is seven times 60. Um, so there's a, there's a thing called the, the angle defect at a vertex. And what you do is you add up all of the angles uh, at a vertex and you subtract that from 360. So um, for the icosahedron, you get, uh, uh, this is a, a total angle of 300 uh, for five times 60, 300, uh, so 300 subtracted from 360 gives you an angle defect of 60. The, uh, the six triangles, you get an angle defect of zero. And for seven triangles, you get an angle defect of negative 60, which uh, corresponds to negative curvature. Um, and well, so what, what does it mean? It sort of wants to hang in saddles um, rather than uh, um, the six triangles around is, is, is flat, it's sort of Euclidean, it likes laying in the plane, or you can curve it around a cylinder, but it doesn't really curve in two different directions um, that are perpendicular to each other. And the icosahedron likes to curve around in a, in a sphere. So this is another way to think about curvature. If you sort of look at two directions that you move across the surface meeting at a point, um, in both directions, it's sort of curving inwards in the same direction with uh, this uh, six triangles Euclidean guy, yes, you can curve it in one way. And then it's sort of, it's curving in this direction, um, sort of to the left. But when you curve it this way, um, you, you can't really put any kind of bend in the other direction. And so this, this uh, the, the directions of bending, there is always one which isn't bending at all, so that's zero curvature. Whereas this guy, this, this guy likes to be in saddles. So now you have, uh, um, let's see if I can do this. Well, so, so it wants to bend this way, whoops. 
wants to bend this way on one side, we can do this with two hands, there we go. So, so my two uh, crooks of my thumbs are showing the ways in which it, it likes to bend, and they bend, you know, one of them bending to the left and the other bending to the right, and because they're opposite, it's another way to think about negative curvature. Okay, so, well, um, how much of, of this negatively curved surface is this? This is radius three, so what does that mean? So start at the vertex in the middle and build all of the triangles around that vertex, um, and then you get some new vertices, so there's, there's one out here, and uh, so build, now build triangles around all of those uh, new vertices, and now you're at radius two, you get some new vertices, and finally build triangles around all of those. So this is the, the radius three guy. Um, and of course, in the, in the service of going too far, this is what happens when you, you get the radius four guy. Um, so it's just sort of hard to believe. It seems like there's so much more of this than there is of this one. All it is is one extra strip of triangles around the outside. And you get so much more stuff. So unlike with um, the Euclidean surface, when you, you add another layer around the outside, you're, you're, you're not getting that many more triangles. It's sort of um, the number of triangles you, goes up, uh, you get goes up with the square of the radius, which is some, something to do with telling you that the area of circles is pi r squared. Um, here, the negative curvature, the number of triangles you get starts to go up exponentially. So it just, it, it's just, <laughs> you know, it's impossible to lay flat, um, and it really sort of clumps up. But if you just look at a small part of it, you can make that flat. Um, well, also in the surface of going too far, um, what about eight triangles around a vertex? So this is uh, the radius two version of eight triangles around each vertex. You can see them around there, and it's even more crinkly. It really does not, I mean, this you just cannot lay flat at all. And if you go one further, this is the radius three version of eight triangles around each vertex, and it's just terrible. This is very corally and, and, uh, um, and yeah, I mean, it, it, it's got so much negative curvature that it really starts bunching up in this incredible way. Um, okay, so that's sort of going too far um, and increasing the curvature. What if we want to decrease the curvature? Well, let's go back to, to, to this guy. Um, so this was the radius three, seven triangles around a vertex. What if we still want to see a, um, a, a negatively curved surface, but one which has sort of less um, curvature per triangle, what can you do? So uh, in a previous video I talked about uh, geodesic domes as a way to sort of reduce the amount of curvature at each triangle. So you start with an icosahedron and then you subdivide each triangle of the icosahedron and you get something which more closely approximates the sphere, has less um, angle defect at each vertex, has less curvature happening um, at each uh, triangle at each vertex. And so if you do the same thing with this guy, what is this? So this is the same triangles as this, so radius three, seven triangles around a vertex, except each of the triangles has been subdivided into four. So uh, let's see if I can find, so here you go. So, so if you look at this guy, there's these four triangles here, and you'll notice the center triangle is equilateral, but the three triangles around it are slightly isosceles. These, these two edges are a little bit longer than the edge in the middle. And, uh, and what this is telling you is that, that really the triangles of this guy should be, should be bowing inwards a little bit. So they should be a little bit bowed inwards, and you can sort of see that here, um, that this edge here is a little bit, there's a slight angle there, this triangle bends in a, a little bit. And if you think about uh, what's happening with uh, the geodesic domes, um, that's exactly right. So if you're going for spherical, um, when you subdivide, the triangles bow out a little bit. Um, here they bow inwards a little bit. Anyway, so so this is a, in some ways more pleasant to play with than the other ones because it's m really not that bad. It's mostly flat. You can get a large area of it to lay pretty flat, but there's parts of it that just don't want to. Um, and this really does like to to hang in in, uh, in saddle shapes. If you sort of hang it vertically, you get this really nice rippling effect as you move, uh, as you look further down the surface. And so, what else? One more thing. So, 
um, again going back to this guy, the radius 3 guy. So there's, there's sort of a, a question of how I uh, did the boundary of this. So what I've done is, is uh, all of the triangles in the interior have hinges on all of their sides, but on the outside I haven't put hinges on here. Um, and this is a, something of an aesthetic choice, you know, it's sort of, you could put little bits of hinge parts on the outside, but they, they won't do anything, you can't connect it to anything, it's printed in place. But at the same time, you might say, well, shouldn't those pieces be there? So this is sort of like the dot 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 telling you that this surface goes on forever. And so uh, I've made versions of, of all of these surfaces, both with and without um, hinge parts on the outside, um, it's a little bit more expensive because you have to print the hinges, uh, the, the useless hinge parts on the outside, but as I say, it sort of uh, implies the infinity of the surface, the fact that the surface goes on forever. So this is hinged, negatively curved surfaces.